Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's Diana Marchand, founder of Raw Foods Made Simple. And um, I am here with a lovely lady by the name of Louise Botwright. And she is from a place called East Anglia, which is close to London in the UK. And she is an EFT and NLP kind of specialist and a coach for women. And she is here today and she's going to talk to us about some simple and easy things you can do to start turning your mindset around and start maybe making those changes in life that we've been talking about. <laughs> so welcome, Louise. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really great to be with you. Um, and so I use NLP and EFT in my work. Um, a lot of people often say, what is NLP and what is EFT and, and you know how does that actually work um, and for me it's more about making those mindset shifts um, like you talked about before it's more about being able to understand why we think do and act the way that we do so that if we want to make changes in our life we have the tools and the knowledge of being able to do that so I often explain NLP as somebody giving you like the instruction manual to your mind almost. And once you've got the instructions, you can kind of flick to the bit that you need to be able to assemble whatever it is that you need to assemble, really. Right. That's the NLP. Yes. Which that's stands the for Neural Linguistic Programming. Right. It okay. does. <laughs> it, it is, has to do with the brain, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we look at, um, the neuro is obviously the um, neuro part of the brain, so the um, kind of the different ways that our brain works and the ways that we think and, you know, the ways that kind of patterns join up. And the linguistics is obviously the language that we use because language is such a big part of um, our world, really, and what becomes our world and how we form our world. Um, and the programming is exactly that. So once you look at the, the neuro and the linguistics, you're able to program your mind to kind of almost um, work in your favor and take you in the right direction. Um, and also as well, you're able to understand how it works so that you can influence people to kind of move in a positive direction as well. And EFT is, um, a lot of people refer to it as tapping, the tapping thing <laughs> it often gets called. Yeah. Um, and it's combined with um, NLP, they can become really powerful tools because what EFT and tapping does, it's basically acupuncture but without the needles so um, we tap on the different points within our bodies different acupressure points mm -hmm. and what happens is when we do this we almost we, we release energy that's stuck um, so we release kind of um, stuck energy within us and also send like calming signals to the brain that actually we're okay. And even if we feel certain ways, it's a really great way of saying actually even though I'm feeling like this, I can, I'm in control and I feel okay. And it's, it's a really calming tool and technique and we can use it to take out the emotional attachment to images and situations and events and things that have happened and are happening in our lives at the moment. Yes, and that is definitely something that I have practiced it for quite a few years. And at first, I didn't think it worked for me. Yeah. And maybe I just wasn't ready for it. And I gave up, and I'm like, I don't even understand it. But yeah. then I think it was like when I was, so I first tried when I was going through the crazy emotional up and downs of perimenopause. And then a few years after, um, I, I really needed something again and it really really helped with actually a lady helped me tap on my belief that it didn't work yeah so that is was something that was so eye-opening I just want to let people know in case you try it sometimes we have this belief it's not gonna work every yeah. nothing works I've tried so many things yeah so she brought that up to my attention I'm like oh my god so we tapped on my belief that it wouldn't work I obviously yeah. had a deep-seated belief that nothing's worked for me, nothing's going to work, this too won't work. And so when we released that, that's when I noticed that, oh my God, this totally works for me. <laughs> and so many other things started to work for me too. So yes. that was something that was really eye-opening. But it really, the biggest thing it helps me with, to calm and center myself when I get panicked, or like anxiety or my doubts coming up big time like the fears or something that's about to stop me something triggers me that's when I do my tapping yeah and I'll do it in a state of complete panic <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I think you know it's excellent that so you me it's excellent that um, that you brought that up as well and you mentioned that because so many people I talk to um, often say, actually, I've tried EFT and it doesn't work or I've had an experience of EFT and it doesn't work. Um, and I think EFT is very much one of those things where um, 
for some people and in some situations, it might not work purely because with EFT, you need to get to that root. It's almost like unraveling, like an onion. So you can have like layers upon layers upon layers. And actually, EFT works by getting to the root cause. And once you take away one thing, you can then, like you said yourself, once that one thing was removed and that block was overcome, you can then um, move on to kind of releasing other things. And sometimes as well, I think, um, for EFT to be really effective, it's about being honest with yourself as well because some people will kind of um, talk about what they feel the issues are when actually what they're feeling inside is something completely different. So you can use it um, with people that don't think that it works, which is really great as well because you don't need to believe in the tool to actually use it and give it a go. So I would say even if you have tried EFT before, just give it another go and persevere with it and see kind of how you get on. And um, you know, in different situations and with different people, it can you have different outcomes and different effects. And I think the other thing is as well, um, some people expect to have this miraculous change where all of a sudden everything's kind of completely different and they've had this amazing experience. Which yes, for some people that does happen. Happen, but often it's those subtle little shifts that you don't always notice straight away until another situation occurs and you think actually no that kind of that thing's gone now <laughs> that's no longer there mm -hmm. so yeah it's one of those things it's definitely worth persevering with it and giving it a go and I'll be honest with you as well to give you a bit of my background um, I came across NLP it was in 2010 um, studied NLP and absolutely loved it and it was during my NLP training I was introduced to EFT um, and I gave it a go and I was like, no, this doesn't work. It looks absolutely crazy. Definitely not for me. I won't be, you know, I won't be using that tool. And I didn't. I actually went and I used my NLP. Um, and it wasn't until a year later that I had the opportunity to go and um, sit on some um, EFT training. And I was kind of humming and harming about it. I thought, well, I've experienced it before. And I went along to the training. It was a week training course. And it absolutely blew my mind. It was one of the most amazing experiences that I've had. And in terms of... Um, opening me up to different things and kind of the release that I felt and was able to have during those seven days was was fantastic and so I've used it every day pretty much <laughs> ever since that experience and I use it all the time in my work now because I've seen the power of it so again I was skeptical about EFT because to be honest it looks a little crazy <laughs> it looks a little out there um, you know and it was it, you know I didn't feel the full benefits of it straight away it wasn't until I went back and did the training and persevered with it that actually I started getting some amazing results not only for myself but for um, to start with my friends and family and then my clients that I worked with great Okay, yeah, that's absolutely true. So people are probably wondering what this is. So maybe you can give us an example. And um, there's a couple things we could use. I know we could go through, you've helped women with, with food issues or with eating. Yes. And that's a good one. And then there's also the one of when you're feeling so busy or tired or overwhelmed. I think that's another one. That's yeah. a good one. Like that stress yeah. comes up. Mm -hmm. So, which yes. one do you, which one do you think we should start with? Or do you well, well if we start with the food, because um, I think that's kind of, I mean, both of them, probably most people can relate to, yes, <laughs> both of those examples that you gave. Um, and I think as well, I just want to point out, e EFT for me is probably the only tool that can quickly change and shift how you feel almost in an instant. Um, it's it's so good because when you have those moments of physical feelings of anxiety or cravings or um, panic or whatever it is, EFT you can physically feel a shift and a calming, like you mentioned, Daddy. You can feel a calming sense within your body, and so it's absolutely great for that. And often people trip up and say, "Oh, well, I don't really know what to say, or I don't really yes. know what to do." So don't worry about that too much, because I'm going to give you an example of it um, now. But you can always just, when you're doing it on your own, um, you, you just say how you feel if you need to. The EFT to be really effective. The more specific you can be about how you feel, the more effective it's going to be because it's going to get straight to that root core of what that feeling and what that issue is. So we have various different points within our body. Um, and we start off by saying um, what they call a setup statement. Now, what this is, is it's a statement that says what the problem is and what it is that you feel and what you believe to be true. Because what happens is our brain processes around 400 billion bits of information per second. And we're only conscious of around 2,000 of those. So our brain works by pattern matching things. And so whenever you have 
a thought in your mind, it creates a feeling in your body, and your brain sends signals back up to your brain, and it recognizes that and opens previous patterns of when you felt the same previously. This is how like fears and phobias develop and limiting beliefs and that kind of thing, because it revisits what's been associated with that before. So by doing the setup statement, what we do is we say how it is that we feel, which opens the pattern match to our brain, and we then do something different by tapping on the body. We're sending calming signals to that part of our brain to say, actually, this time it's okay. And so it almost, um, it's like a pattern interrupt. So it interrupts that pattern of what previously happened. So we do the setup statement three times. And to do that, we tap on what they call the karate chop point, which is the side of the hand, which is just here. So whenever you start off with EFT, we tap on the side of the hand and would say how we feel. So if it was with food, for example, and you um, you have a craving for a particular food, you would say, even though I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. Even though I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. I completely love and accept myself anyway. I completely love and accept myself anyway. And the brain goes, hang on, that's new. <laughs> Let's put yeah. those two together. That's something new. So we've opened the pattern match, and then we've told it something different. Because usually what would happen if we had a craving, we'd be like, oh, I really want a piece of chocolate. I really need that piece of chocolate, that piece of chocolate. Oh, it's there. Should I? Shouldn't I? If I do this? And a whole scenario goes through our mind. But actually what we do is we say that it's okay. And we just repeat it a few times. So you can say, even though. Even though. I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. I completely love and accept myself anyway. I completely love and accept myself anyway. And if you want to take it one step further, you can talk about the feelings that you have. So you could say, even though. Even though. I'm craving this piece of chocolate. I'm craving this piece of chocolate. I can feel anxiety in my stomach. I can feel anxiety in my stomach. I completely love and accept myself anyway. I completely love and accept myself anyway. So what we've done there is we've set the setup statement and then we go into the EFT itself. So there's various points that we're going to use. And the first one is at the top of the head. So we're just lightly tapping on the top of the head. And it doesn't matter which hand you use or which side that you tap on up. So we're going to do some facial points in a minute. And all we do is we just talk about how we're feeling to start with. So even though I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. Even though I'm really craving this piece of chocolate. I can feel the urges in my stomach. I can feel the urges in my stomach. And I really want it. And I really want it. That's okay. That's okay. And then we move down to the eyebrow point, which is just here. So, even though I want this chocolate. Even though I want this chocolate. That's okay. That's okay. Totally fine. Totally fine. I feel like I really need it. I feel like I really need it. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. And we can move on to the side of the eye here. These cravings that I have, these cravings that I have, feel really strong. Feel really strong. Really strong. Really strong. And then we can move down to under the eye. I feel like I really need to eat it. I feel like I really need to eat it. But I feel guilty too. But I feel guilty too. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do. And that's okay. And that's okay. I'm going to eat that piece of chocolate. I'm going to eat that piece of chocolate. I really know I am. I really know I am. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I can take it or leave it. I can take it or leave it. Either way. Either way. I'm okay. I'm okay. And then we have a point here, which is the collarbone point, which is just below where our collarbone is. And one of my favorite statements to say when we use EFT mm -hmm. is, I control my emotions. Good. That's a good one. I control my emotions. They don't control me. They don't control me. I choose how I think. I choose how I think. My thoughts don't choose me. My thoughts don't choose me. I would love to have that chocolate. I would love to have that chocolate. And then we just go through the set the the, the points again. So saying the same things. But it's going to be my choice. But it's going to be my choice. I will choose whether to have the chocolate or not. I will choose whether to have the chocolate or not. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. If I choose to have it. If I choose to have it. That's okay. That's okay. And if I choose not to. And if I choose not to. That's okay too. That's okay too. It's going to be my choice. It's going to be my choice. See, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. 
I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling calm. And um, well, all we're doing here is we'll just tap through the different points mm -hmm. until you do feel a sense of calm. So even if at this point your brain's still going, I really, really want that chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just say, I really, really want that chocolate. I really, really want that chocolate. I still feel like I've got to have it. I still feel like I've got to have it. I feel like I've got to have it. I've got to have it. Really got to have it. I really got to have it. That's okay. That's okay. Need the chocolate. I need the chocolate. Or I could just let the chocolate go. Or I could just let the chocolate go. Or I could eat it. Or I could eat it. It's my choice. It's my choice. Either way. Either way. I'm okay. I'm okay. And then what I like to do is once you get to a point where you physically feel calmer within your body, it's just tapping some really positive things about yourself. Because a lot of people kind of use the EFT to get rid of that urge that you've got there and whilst you're doing it it's great for tapping in the positive so you might as well just give yourself some good stuff yes. so you could say something like I made the choice I made the choice to do this to do this I didn't go for the chocolate I didn't go for the chocolate I took control I took control I took control of my body I took control of my body I took control of my mind I took control of my mind and I took control of my health and I took control of my health because I'm a strong, confident woman. Because I'm a strong, confident woman. And I get to make my own choices. And I get to make my own choices. My thoughts and emotions. My thoughts and emotions. Don't control me. Don't control me. I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm a powerful woman. I'm a powerful woman. I'm a strong, confident woman. I'm a strong, confident woman. And I'm taking charge of my health. And I'm taking charge of my health. I'm taking control of my body. I'm taking control of my body. And I'm choosing wellness. And I'm choosing wellness. I'm choosing to step into my power. I'm choosing to step into my power. And say no to the chocolate. And say no to the chocolate. Or anything else that comes up. Or anything else that comes up. I'm choosing to take back my power. I'm choosing to take back my power. Every time. Every time. I get a craving. I get a craving. I know. I know. I can just do this. I can just do this. I can just tap. I can just tap. Lightly tap. Lightly tap. And take control of my feelings. And take control of my feelings. And so that's just an example of a quick round of EFT that you can use. Now obviously, if, you, if you're out and about, you don't want to be walking down the street sort of tapping yourself <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> I've totally done it. Well, <laughs> so there are some points in the, the hands that we can use um, and what I'll do, I'll make sure all of these points are on a PDF um, oh, for everybody to, to look at, yeah. but where they are on the side of our hands, I'll just show you quickly, is where our nail goes into our finger, it's just like on the nail bed sort of here, so we just slightly tap on the side by the thumb, the side of our, yeah, 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 on the, the sides thumb. of our hands. Okay. So if you're out and about, you can even just tap on your fingers like that or you can even just use your thumb right. and just like quite if you've got your hand down by your side or whatever you can just tap on your various different finger points oh cool yeah so you don't have to kind of wait until you get home or whatever ah, and another good. great technique to use is um is what they call the 7 11 breathing technique so you just take a long slow breath in for the count of seven and then breathe out for the count of 11 right. and even if you do that you know, you can do that wherever you are, or you can do that whilst tapping on this collarbone point as well, even if you don't know what to say. And again, it will just bring you back mm -hmm. to that calm and centered place within your body. Because like I said earlier, what happens is we have a, a thought in our body and it, really, it produces a chemical reaction, which then sends an emotional um, feeling into our body. When we get that feeling, we then produce more thoughts. And the more thoughts we have, the more feelings we have. And sometimes we can find ourselves in this like panic. And this is where we get those that, that kind of runaway train of chatter that goes on in our mind. And EFT can just really quickly bring us back to that place of calmness and being in control so you don't have to run off with those thoughts that you've got. Yes, and it really does. Well, at least it really works for me now. I Sometimes I fight it and I'm like, no, I don't want to. Or I, <laughs> for some reason you're just caught up in the emotion. But also I think when, when you go through it, what really helps for me is that I'm, I'm letting it out. Like, because when you try to stuff something down, so it doesn't mean, like, 
you can, if you're at work, you can go into the washroom, which yeah. is what I used to do, yeah. right? Just get right. away for a few moments. Uh, go into your car somewhere where you can just be alone and and do this or I go for walks and I just and the tears flow and I get frustrated but it's the releasing and then going through this like it's really and just allowing yourself to feel release and it doesn't take long I think some people yeah. think I've had someone said I'm not ready to bring up all my emotions because it's like they think it's gonna be there for two weeks Those, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you bring them up along with doing the tapping it only takes minutes to start feeling yes. better. It does. So it's not this worry of, oh, I have a, a date tonight or something, so if I start tacking, I'm gonna be a mess for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and on that point as well is, um, the great thing about EFT is you, it doesn't just have to be a tool that you use every time you have a bad emotion. You know, the amount of times I sit in traffic and I'm like, right, I'm, I'm sat in traffic, the traffic's not moving, what can I do? I'm a strong, confident woman. Right. Oh, fantastic. I'm fabulous. My business is doing really well. My life is fantastic. You can use it to just give yourself that boost. So if you have got that day and you think, oh, I don't want to clear all the stuff, you can just say, right, I'm feeling fabulous in my body. I am completely fabulous and I absolutely deserve my success. I deserve love. I deserve happiness. And again, the same thing will happen that you'll actually have a boost. So you don't have to use it every time just for negative emotions. You know, particularly if you are, if you're dedicated to making a shift in the way that you live your life or the way that you eat or, you know, any kind of new habits that you've got, don't wait until it gets so bad that you have the anxiety there. To use a tool, you know, just even if you take like five minutes out of your morning or your afternoon or whatever, just to tap on some good stuff, just to give yourself some of that love and some of that good feeling, that's going to help you to achieve what it is that you want as well. Yes, and I do it a lot when I'm driving. Yes, <laughs> yes, because it's it's like you know I shouldn't say I guess I drive with you know you drive with just one <laughs> hand or whatever, and I just go through some we'll of the spots that really feel good to me. And you'll yeah. find like there's certain spots I think that resonate with each person and help bring you back to your center kind of. And that's this one and this one for me. Yeah. And so I'll just be driving and if I'm, and then I'll do the breathing. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It helps so much. It so does. what do you, I know you've helped some, a few women with the issue of weight and I think that um, when someone's worried about their weight or has this whole thing around their weight, it they have so much emotion attached mm -hmm. to their weight instead of, yes. you know, it's hard to release it. It's hard to shift maybe the focus away from weight and onto just health, right? So do you have any, um, what do you feel? I know you've worked, so I'll just let you take on that subject. Yes. <laughs> well, I think um, the thing to remember is as well, it's almost like a catch-22. When you have this stress and you have this worry about your weight, what it does is it puts you in a state of stress, which releases cortisol, the stress hormone within your body, which is um, pro-cancer, it's pro-diabetes, it's pro all of the negative stuff that we don't want going on within our body. And when we're in a stressed state, it's harder for us to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Because our body kind of harbors, you know, the fat and the things that are there. And you're just not going to feel good. And when you're not feeling good, you're not going to want to do anything to kind of make you look good or make you feel good because you're going to be in this negative state. And like I've mentioned several times before, every time you have a thought, within one one hundredth of a second, that thought enters into our body. And the way that we feel produces more thoughts based on the way that we're feeling. And so if you've gone through your life having um, body issues or weight issues for, say, the last 30 or 40 years, what's happened is that your brain has literally laid down what they call neural pathways that help to pattern match what it is that you do based on driving for example i'll use that as another example as we've been talking about it you don't find when you get in your car you get to your destination and you're like how did i get here <laughs> because what happens is you've been on autopilot based on the neural pathways you've created in your mind and it's exactly the same with eating and the way that you feel about yourself if you've been training yourself for the last, you know, like I said earlier, 30 or 40 years to feel a certain way about your body, to put a certain food in your body, to um, treat yourself and talk to yourself in, in a certain way, then when you try and change that, your body's going to go, whoa, 
hang on a minute, <laughs> this is new, this isn't right, we're not supposed to feel this way, we're supposed to feel bad about ourselves, we're supposed to put bad food in our body, we're supposed to have lots and lots of stress hormone, you know, being released in our body every single day. And so, for you to be able to consciously make that shift, the first thing that you need to do is become aware of that, because I think that's one of the biggest things we think, why do I feel this way? Why does it happen to me? You know, why do I think this way? What, you know, it's almost like this why me kind of syndrome. And for you to be able to shift that, you need to realize, number one, actually, the way that you are now, it's not your fault. It's based on the way that you've programmed yourself over the last so many years. The beliefs that you've taken on, the environments that you've been in, the beliefs of other people have created unconscious pathways and patterns in your mind and that's the way that your body runs. So for you to be able to recognize that and say actually I'm doing this not because I'm a bad person or not because I don't deserve it or not because I'm unworthy, it's because it's the way that I've learned to be, it's the way that my mind has almost trained my body in the way that my body has trained my mind. And so that's like a really important step to recognize it's not, you know, it's not your fault and it's not because you can't do it. It's because of the habit that you've learned. It's become a habit. It's become a thing that you do that's so unconscious, you don't even realize that you're doing it half of the time. And the first step to breaking any pattern and changing any pattern is to recognize that. And then once you've recognized that, there's some really simple things that you can do. Um, even if you feel like you don't have the time to do them or you're already rushed off your feet and you've already got so much stress and so many you know, different kind of things going on in your life, you can. there's simple little things that you can implement to help you make those shifts. And one of them is EFT. Um, you know, and even if you haven't got the time to do EFT, just taking five minutes a day just to, to tell yourself positive statements about yourself. Um, our subconscious mind is the most amazingly powerful tool and they say that research shows that 96% of our daily thoughts and our actions come from our subconscious mind um, which really makes sense using that driving example and things like our heart is being pumped around our body, our cells are being regenerated all of the time, all of that is coming from our subconscious mind. Now our subconscious doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's false and it loves repetition. So the more you repeat something to your subconscious mind, like I'm overweight, I feel I don't feel good, I haven't got the time, I'm too stressed, I'm not worthy. The more those neural pathways are created in your mind and the more your brain believes that to be true about yourself. Now, this can really be used to your advantage in a positive way when we're trying to make those changes and trying to make those shifts because if we're constantly repeating positive statements to ourselves, it's going to create new neural pathways and it's going to start to believe that to be true. And what we focus on, we attract. What we see in our lives, we attract more of. So this is where people often talk about the law of attraction and that kind of thing. It's, it's the more you're focused on something, the more that becomes true and the more that becomes your reality. So if you're giving yourself the time just for five minutes a day or five minutes here or five minutes there, just to kind of really fill yourself up with fantastic stuff and, and really great thoughts and positive statements and positive affirmations, then you're, that's going to become your new reality and that's going to become your new way of thinking. And EFT just really enhances that because not only are you saying it to yourself, you're having a physical chemical reaction in your body through the tapping and the vibrations and the things that are being released in there as well. So it's a really great way to be able to make those shifts. And the thing is, you could have all of the willpower in the world and all of the, yes, I'm going to change, yes, I'm going to do it, yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But what you've got to remember is, for the last 30 or 40 years, you've been telling yourself, training yourself to act in a certain way. And even though on the surface you decide that you want to change, you're only doing that with 4% of your conscious mind. So for you to really make those shifts and make those changes, your subconscious needs to be able to catch up and be on board with you. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, it, you're, you know, you're fighting a losing battle. So you need to get your subconscious caught up with you. And the great thing is, when your subconscious is there, it becomes effortless. It becomes normal. It becomes your new reality. It becomes your new program. And, you know, there are, I, I, I love ease. I love being able to slot things into kind of my day without having to take hours out to do this or to do that. So it's finding ways that work for you as well. And think, something as simple as having, like, inspirational words around your home 
or visual representations of like things that get you excited and kind of really represent where it is you want to be and what direction you're going in. All of that kind of stuff soaks into the subconscious without us even realizing it. Our environments equate for a lot. Yes, absolutely. And even if, um, I know if some people have a lot of other people they live with, a lot of men, yes. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> I would put things in my car, yeah. you know, even messages or notes or something in my car, because that was really my only space <laughs> yes. at one yeah. time. And yeah. so I found that really helped. I'm like, I'm just going to put them in my car. <laughs> I carried them in my purse, things like that, right? Yeah. So for women who feel like, I just can't slap up these things, you know. Yeah. And don't yeah. worry if people are going to laugh at you. That's get over it, right? We have to get over someone yes. saying things like that. Finally, I got over that and put them on my fridge, some on my fridge too. Definitely. And I think as well, you know, we all we all have phone, mobile phones nowadays. So yes. setting little pop-up reminders, I do that on my phone, you know, every now and then they'll get a pop-up that says, you're fabulous today. <laughs> like 3 p.m. every every Tuesday and every Thursday I get that message. <laughs> There's other That's messages so that I great. get. You know, even on my alarm, when my alarm goes off in the morning, um, if I have to get up at different times, I have an alarm. And instead of it just coming up alarm, it's like, wake up gorgeous, you've got such a beautiful day ahead of you. You know, that kind of stuff. And it's like you it's almost like you need to create this bubble of um, of what you want your life to be. It's like you have to be it and live it for you to actually feel that way to see those results. You know, research shows as well that we become like the five people we spend the most time with. Yeah. So if you are surrounded by people where you feel actually I can't be that person, I can't be who I really am, or I can't be this, it's like you you need to do something to be able to protect yourself. You need to be able to do something to give you, like you said with your car, even if it is your car or a little space in your bathroom or in your bedroom or a little space at work, you need to give yourself a little environment where you can be you and really feel good and reconnect to yourself because you need things to work in your favor um, because what influences you the most is going to be what wins and if you're being influenced more by the, the old way of being and the old patterns of behavior and the old thoughts that's going to continue to stay your reality but if you can slowly just introduce new little things that's going to start to become your new reality and the effects uh, and the results will show instantly almost instantly you will be able to feel a difference in yourself and it's just creating that and building that momentum and kind of keeping that going and even if you need to find like some um, accountability buddy or, or somebody else or just to help you keep that up just just get yourself a little space or a little person where you can kind of get that boost and build that momentum and really reconnect to yourself and give yourself some positivity even like a little playlist you can create a happiness playlist or um, you know envision who it is that you want to be and who you see yourself as when you've made those shifts and when you've made those changes and think about what makes you feel that way at the moment and put yourself together a playlist of like if i when i'm there what would i be listening to what makes me happy what makes me feel really great mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely too that's really good i was just thinking that um even if they do like when you were talking their nightstand right yes um yeah. if you could put some really neat beautiful things on your nightstand so that when you wake up in the morning you see them and when you go to bed you see them because um yeah, I know what it's like if you live in a place and it's like, I only, I don't really, where am I going to put up all these, you know, because so many people live with family, <laughs> other family members, right? So they yeah. got to find their own little space, which is yeah. perfect. And yeah. just start. And then do you, even walking around the house or walking down the street, I've done this because people don't watch you the whole time. Right? Right. And they may see a, so what if you're doing this? They just think you're scratching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know? but and yeah, this is a really great one. This is a really powerful yeah. point here. And it doesn't look, you know, no. that, that's quite discreet as well if you kind of... Yeah, just... and so you can fit it in anytime, anywhere. Like, I totally agree with what you said. And even if you don't know what to say sometimes when I'm in a state of um, that true overwhelm where I, I'm crying and I can't even speak, I yeah. would just tap. Yes, that's all you need tap. to do. You don't even need to say anything. I go through, just... yeah, I've gone through the points until I reach the point where I'm able to actually voice it, speak it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's Perfect. something I know too because Absolutely. I can get so caught up. I think it's at a time sometimes when I I feel I need to voice something, but it, I may feel like maybe it's wrong or or someone's not allowing me to be me or voice myself. I get like so stuck in my throat. Yes. And I can barely speak. It's so bizarre, but it happens. And then I tap until it releases. So. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Even the point, like you said there, about um, having other, other people and family members in your home. I know it's not always possible, but uh, my little boy is five. He loves EFT. Sometimes he really doesn't like it. <laughs> He's in a tantrum, <laughs> and he knows that I'm going to EFT him. He's like, oh, because he knows. <laughs> It will shift his state, and he's going to have to change. But you know, introducing it to um, to other family members and things like that, and even if the, the EFT is a bit out there for them, even things like we create vision boards together. You know, we create. Um, he you know he's, he's involved in all of my work and everything that I do because it's like the state that I try and live in is a really happy state most of the time. <laughs> we all have our moments, but it's like and teaching other members in the family mm. the reasons why it is that you're doing that and getting their support and even getting them involved in it and just giving them the understanding is sometimes really great and just kind of boosts your results and if you've got other people there that kind of aren't looking at you thinking what are you doing <laughs> you're looking crazy you're acting crazy you know what's all this kind of stuff explain it to them and being open with them because it is you know it's, it's like I said before our brain works by pattern matching and we can only make those patterns uh, match those patterns based on previous events and previous experiences. Our mind can't conceive a reality that hasn't happened yet. So for us to be able to do that and to make those changes, we have to introduce it to it. You know, it's like we have to introduce it to what it is that we do want. So the more you can create that bubble of abundance or whatever it is that you want, the more you can create that kind of, this is my world and this is how I feel, the more you can introduce that the easier it is going to be for you to make those changes and make those shifts. Exactly. That's so good. And I love that you said that because, yes, like if someone sees what they want, but it's so far from where they are or they think, I've never been there. Like you said, we don't know that experience. But realize that you take little steps, right? That the, Like let's say for them, they're making the green smoothies every day and then you're just starting to take steps. That's introducing it to yourself, yeah. right? It's taking yes. the little steps leading towards it and yeah. not giving up and not thinking because I haven't done it all, I'm a failure, right? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. succeeding every day because you're conscious and you're making choices that are positive, yes. right? Yeah, and I think that's what it is, you know, that's what it boils down to, that ability to make conscious choices and not be controlled by the emotions and the events of the past that have kept you stuck. Because when you're not making con conscious choices, all that's happening is your subconscious is going in autopilot and you're making decisions based on how things have been in the past and that's never going to lead to the future that you want. Um, and even things such as when you're making those little things, even if it is like, a, 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 you know, your green juice or you've done EFT for five minutes or you've just done your breathing or you've just popped something on your phone to pop up sort of once a day and remind you how great you are or whatever it is, really just just be thankful of that and remind yourself, like, rather than just drinking the juice and like, oh, yeah, I've made the green juice, yeah. it's fantastic, <laughs> just really kind of recognize and actually... I've really empowered myself today by making that conscious choice. Yes. I chose this. I didn't let my past define my future. I made that choice. I became aware of it. And that alone is going to make you feel really great. Perfect. Oh, what a perfect way to end. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. I've enjoyed having you so much. I mean, no, we could talk for hours and hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you know, <laughs> it's your Friday night, so I'm going to let you know. <laughs> Um, so you have a site and I will put the site on it and send it to everybody. Um, so if someone's interested in working with you or do you, how do you work? Do you work with groups? Do you work one-on-one? Can you just yes. give us a little snippet of, yes. Yes, I love, um, I absolutely love to work with people based on their individual circumstances and where they're at at the moment. So I do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching, but I also um, do some group coaching programs as well. So I've got a mastermind program, which is due to launch very shortly, actually, um, which all the information of that will be on my website. Um, and that's going to be like a really big shift program in terms of the mindset side of things. Um, but, you know, if people just need extra guidance and extra support, please feel free to kind of reach out via um, my website or via Facebook. If anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer anything and point people in the, you know, the direction of resources and things like that. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so generous. Thank you. <laughs> and I will send everybody the uh, tapping point. Guys, we'll do the tapping point um, picture so you can follow by that. And then I know where those are if anybody needs help too. But thank you so much. Loved, no, loved no. talking to you today no, no. and before. So I want you to have a wonderful weekend. And thank, thank you so you. much for helping us with this. I really appreciate it. And um, maybe we'll have a chance to chat again soon. Yes. Okay, thanks, Louise. Thank you so thank much. You.